This webinar is on the Illustrated Guide to Soil Taxonomy, the new derivative product uh, resulting from the uh, 12th edition of the Keys to Soil Taxonomy, and is in, intended to be a more visual guide to soil taxonomy, uh, and, and also an easier to use method, particularly for those that are novices to soil classification, uh, to college students, those anyone who's kind of just dipping their toe into soil classification using soil taxonomy, help them learn what the uh, diagnostic horizons are, what some of the terminology means, and just visually explore how do you use soil taxonomy. So Ken, would you say that's a fair assessment? I think it's a very fair assessment. Those of you who have had a little bit of experience in using it, either as a student or professionally, you know it's a, a very complex uh, document. technical in nature, and uh, due to this complexity, uh, it also rela relies quite heavily upon some personal knowledge and experience of various kinds of soils and soil features. And um, that was brought to our attention. That was a very difficult thing to teach. You can't teach experience, and nor can you take students to areas in very around the world very readily. And so um, we run into a situation where it was becoming more and more difficult to teach uh, U.S. soil taxonomy to students. <clears throat> One of the um, things, uh, I guess Sean's put up the, the first slide now, is talking about the developing of an illustrated guide uh, to soil, uh, U.S. soil taxonomy. It's been a, quite a collaborative effort uh, that, that, was, that went into this. You notice there's about 16 uh, names listed there, about half NRCS and about the other half, maybe a little bit more than half in fact our university uh, professors and or uh, personnel. Um, this, uh, the roots of this uh, go back to about uh, 2011 Asheville, yep. I think it was, mm -hmm. at the uh, National uh, Cooperative Soil Survey Conference. Uh, casual comment by, I think it was pro quite probably Mickey Ransom, since he was uh, selected as chair of the work group, uh, casual comment to Mike Golden was, this thing's so hard to teach, you know, soil classification. And uh, out of that came a concept and idea that we need to do something about that. And so a, a work group was formed with uh, Mickey Ransom as the chair, as well as Cam Lurch. He was, uh, of course, now retired, but he was the co-chair until he did, did retire. Um, others involved, uh, Janice Bettinger, Utah State, Craig Ditzler, who's retired. He used to be our national leader for standards. Kim Kirchin, uh, kind of an interesting thing there, uh, Kim was a graduate student at Kansas State, and her thesis was teaching of soil taxonomy, or the keys to soil taxonomy, using the keys themselves and using, at that time, the first product uh, created for this was the, uh, was the simplified guide to soil taxonomy. And so she made her thesis into comparative analysis of the student performance on the teaching of these methods. And um, uh, she just successfully defended her thesis uh, this, uh, early this past summer uh, on that subject. Others involve uh, Paul McDaniel, Curtis Monger, Philip Owens, uh, Mark Stolt, uh, Joe Sheretti, who's retired, uh, John Galbraith, um, Sean McVeigh, Toby O'Gean, uh, Joey Shaw, and um, uh, Dave Weindorf at Texas Tech. Uh, you got the slides there, Sean? A little bit of background. I think, you know, many of you who have uh, studied soil taxonomy know uh, it was first conceived back in the 50s. We were looking for a classification system to organize our knowledge about soils. Um, the first issue of it, uh, we first of all, I guess, had the uh, seventh approximation issued sometime in the, in the 60s, uh, giving a, a, the, the initial stages of what we have in OS soil taxonomy today. In 1975, the first edition was published. And 1999, the second edition was published. If you remember, the first edition is about two inches thick. The second edition, four inches thick. And the second edition had less photos and more uh, taxa and criteria regarding soil classification. Mary Jill had left the conference. During this whole time, uh, as interim steps were made in soil taxonomy uh, to keep up with this and make these changes available to the users, the uh, keys to soil taxonomy were published on a, on a basis of about once every three to four years. Right now, we, uh, the latest one 
is our 12th um, edition of the Key to Salt Taxonomy, and it was just released this past May. <clears throat> we also might also add that probably in the future, look for that summer schedule and and to uh, issue a release of the of a new version of the keys that kind of coincides with the World Congress of Soils. World Congress of Soil Science, yeah. So we're going to try to stick to that once in four year uh, uh, rotation or uh, sequencing. Uh, Spanish uh, translations are available for the keys to soil taxonomy as well as it's you've probably seen it's on uh, available on an ebook format too and electronically for your mobile devices. Uh, many probably don't know, but there are six levels of hierarchy within soil taxonomy. Their first five are in what they call uh, eliminatory uh, key format. That means as you move down, you step down through the system, and it takes you on a defined path to a final tax or a final classification. The uh, lowest level of that, or the sixth level in the hierarchy, is the soil series, and probably many of you have familiarity with uh, the soil series concept, of course. And I think for uh, soil series that we have, there's uh, around 24,000 soil series recognized in the U.S. as of the last uh, check we did, and worldwide, easily about 30,000 soil series. Of course, we don't yeah. keep track of all those in our um, soil series database that we maintain here at the center, but that's a lot of soil series. Yeah, and in a lot of countries. Uh, now, soil taxonomy has been around since 75, so a lot of countries have adopted some of the concepts and some of the um, structure of soil taxonomy into their own classification systems. And I, you know, some of you are where I was in Ireland, and their classification system draws a lot upon U.S. soil taxonomy. It's not the same, but it draws upon a lot of the concepts that were developed there. And there was a great deal of a ability to communicate in terms of well, how does soil tax? And we, we were studying the the WRB, or World Reference Base System, and they would ask, well, how does that relate to soil taxonomy? And so that was uh, one of the things that kind of give you an idea. The, the widespread, at least understanding and use, utilization of, uh, of soil taxonomy. Come on. Got it over here. So some of the strengths of the uh, system is every soil is allocated to a class through the family level. The system also strongly enables soil survey production and interpretation. Okay, uh, you know, one of the good things about it, you can make decisions right in the field when you're using soil taxonomy. Um, and uh, the one thing that, of course, it does uh, make a tremendous use of is, uh, is ancillary laboratory data and such. Um, the names are, are somewhat descriptive, you know, in terms of uh, within the classification based upon scientific terminology uh, at the at least at the uh, top five levels. Um, soil taxonomy, like I said, is widely used. Uh, 137 countries uh, were, have utilized soil taxonomy at some point in time. And um, I, my understanding, and not having been a part of this yet, but in the universal soil classification system, which is being looked at and possibly developed uh, through the uh, International Union of Soil Science, they are looking at uh, our great groups being the basis of that classification system. And I just want to point out that uh, one of the nice things about the soil taxonomy system is every soil in the world can be classified. Uh, it'll, somehow it will fall out through the family level. And soil taxonomy is also a common language for comparison and research. Um, as was mentioned, you know, if the system's wrong, we can fix it. Uh, just make a suggestion. And it's improved, you know, those changes uh, improvements like that, they come through the standards branch here at the National Soil Survey Center uh, via regional soil survey conferences, national soil survey conferences, or just simply submit it to the, uh, the director here and he'll get it to where it needs to go. Yeah, we'll be, uh, we'll be uh, submitting or publishing an, an update to um, part uh, 6, 614 of the National Soil Survey Handbook here probably within the next month or so. And that update gives a, a clearer picture of how the processing of amendments to soil taxonomy is going to proceed. It will be a whole lot more open and whole more transparent uh, to those who make proposals and those who are viewing the status of the analysis of proposals uh, to change taxonomy. But there are some weaknesses to soil taxonomy. We'll be the first to admit that. Okay, uh, yeah, so, some of the uh, the weaknesses are is the, the the main one is it is incredibly complex. 
Uh, those, how many of you have tried to use it in the room here? Uh, two or three, four, yeah, okay. Uh, have tried to use it, and you probably do understand how complex it can be. It, uh, one of the things that makes it complex, it has quantitative limits. You know, for percent base saturation, how much organic matter, uh, salinity. Various of the taxa classes have, have uh, numeric values for the quantification of that factor within the soil. Not only do you have it that, but it has to occur within certain depths within the soil. And so that adds a, a additional complexity to the whole system. Um, you have chemical and physical variables, climate variables such as moisture status, temperature regimes, depth and thickness like I just mentioned. And uh, you have both uh, relative and absolute comparisons in it. Additionally, because it is a, a key system, it has very complex wording, and, or, both of, neither of, or, and, or, this, that, does not contain, et cetera. These are the kind of words that it uses. It makes it rather complex to, to visualize what you're actually classifying. It's precise, but it's not easy to follow. Um, there are uh, also exceptions that are made within the taxonomic system for, the rare, for those rare soils. Um, well, some of its weakness, of course, is it's, it's very long, or rather long, uh, taxonomic class that we have there. Uh, looking at the one that you have on the screen there, fine loamy mixed superactive thermic. Now that is the terms used in the family classification level within soil taxonomy. Um, the uh, the uh, one in yellow there, aridic, that is the fourth level, which is the great group level. I mean subgroup level, I'm sorry. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, three, two, and one are great group, suborder, and order, in that order. Uh, to someone experienced in using uh, soil classification or pedologist, it makes perfect sense. It's kind of a hierarchical structure, a building from the base up, upward through the soil family. But uh, if you're not involved in soil classification, soil taxonomy, soil mapping, this is probably uh, more difficult than Greek, I would say. And there's lots of different authors that come. You know, very few of us have seen soils <clears throat> from all over the world, all the continents. And so there's been many different authors, so the writing style is not exactly consistent throughout, especially between the mineral and the organic soils. Um, you know, and there's no key to the epipedons or the diagnostic horizons and characteristics. Each one has to be checked. Um, that's the way it is now. And there's not a lot of pictures in the keys um, or simple descriptions. You know, the, and also terms horizon and layer have different meanings, but the terms are kind of used interchangeably depending on where you look in, in the system. Now, it's interesting to note these first three that we've identified, the number of authors, the inconsistencies in style there, no key to epipedons and diagnostic horizons and not enough pictures, you know, that can be fixed or simplified through illustration. Yeah, and that's what this has been about. And that is what our solution is, is the illustrated guide to soil taxonomy. And one of the first things you know, we want to say to those that are out there that are practicing soil scientists, professional with us, especially doing the soil mapping program, and perhaps even those in research, this is not intended to replace uh, the keys to soil taxonomy nor soil taxonomy. There are areas in which we know that if you follow the illustrated guide, it potentially can lead you to an error in classification. Uh, typically, though, that would be in a very uh, regim or very um, um, strict application of taxonomy that, you, that it would lead you to such an error. In, in the case of a student learning to use it or someone wanting to know just about some general management of land based upon soil classification, the illustrated guide will probably serve your needs more than 85% of the time. I think it's interesting that some of our uh, university professors that we work with, they, they believe that uh, truly that the accuracy of using the illustrated guide is much higher than 85 percent, easily over 90 percent. I don't think anybody's done any statistical analysis of that, you know, like classifying a thousand pedons and then seeing what they, you know, did it match up to the correct classification. But the idea is, <clears throat> you know, most of the time it's going to get you to the right answer, but there are certain situations, particularly with sliding scale criteria, that you wouldn't come up with, um, you know, that technically correct answer.
Let me see. Um, the, the general contents, we're, we're working on actually now a second, pretty much a second document, which is the Illustrated Guide. We had a, an earlier one that we had uh, developed just in testing that was called the Simplified Guide. And we suddenly realized our Simplified Guide was completely full of pictures and illustrations and diagrams. And uh, I don't know who it was, it was Craig or someone, come up and say, this thing's more like an Illustrated Guide. And that, consequently, we did uh, think that would probably be a, a better name for this document as an Illustrated Guide uh, to Soil Taxonomy. Um, it consists of basically three parts. One is to how to use this version of the keys. It tells you how to use this document. Um, and it gives an illustrate, uh, introductions to the Illustrated Guide, uh, some general steps to follow, you know, uh, for a student when they're just learning how to classify soil, how to go about what, what to look at and how to go about classifying it. And then it has some information about soil and temperature moisture regimes. Uh, part two is diagnostic horizons and features. And this is where a lot of the illustrations come in. If you haven't seen redoxomorphic features before, you could somebody could describe them to you, and it, after a little while, you would probably figure out okay, kind of red areas, and there's some some kind of bleached out areas and such. But with a the photo there, it's just immediate. You know, your your comprehension is is immediate on, on what's being discussed. And so, within the diagnostic horizons and features, we have a, photos of almost all of those. Uh, features within the soil that the students can use. Um, the third and the main part, I guess, uh, in terms of performing soil classification is the keys themselves, and it's keys to the orders, suborders, and great groups. We only, within the illustrated guide, it only takes you down through the uh, great group in terms of classifying a soil. And of course, that is probably one of the main things that is taught at the university level to beginning pedologists. We get into greater detail later on after they understand the concepts of soil formation and the um, and the parameters that are looked at uh, or that change as soils deform. And, and there's also a few other things included. <clears throat> there's a section on a few things to know about classifying soils and some important sources of information you'll want to check out. We list uh, some general steps to follow when you classify a soil in the illustrated guide, and there's there's basically five steps. I've listed the start of three of them here, and but you consider the environment where the soil profile is located, then you describe the soil profile, determine which diagnostic horizons and characteristics are present. Uh, the fourth step is identify the soil moisture and temperature regimes, and then the fifth step is determine the classification. One of the things we've done here, you know, is uh, uh, put the, um, in this case, uh, as you're looking at the screen, the soil temperature regimes into a flow chart. So you can see where you're at and, you know, how it moves. Uh, you know, that if you're jellic, you have a mean annual soil temperature less than zero degrees C. Um, in the case of crag, uh, if you are between zero and uh, eight degrees C, mean annual soil temperature, and you're in a mineral soil, and it's not saturated uh, in the summer, then your mean annual soil temperature in the case of, um, if, if you're not saturated, is zero to 15 degrees, or if it has an O horizon, and uh, if it doesn't have an O horizon, if it does have an O horizon, your mean annual soil temperature has to be uh, zero to eight degrees. So it's kind of a, a way of, walking you through this whole process of uh, determining, uh, in this case, temperature regime. Here we got an example of the layout that we use in the illustrated guide on this one dealing with epipedons. And so you can say we've got a, uh, you know, sort of a simplified uh, definition of the epipedon. Uh, hyperlinks are used. Uh, really, the, the illustrated guide is made to use online, yeah. an online resource. That's how a lot of our our entry-level people are, seem to be using these tools. And then I've got an example of the histic epipedon uh, description shown here, and then the uh, a, a picture that goes with it. So very visual. Yeah. One of the things we did, too, within the, um, when they're looking at it in the online version, it has bookmarks uh, out to the left of the PDF. So that way you can jump very quickly to various sections uh, of, of the document. Uh, we, we give a, within this, uh, we, we give a brief description of the soil orders 
And uh, you see they are hyperlinked to a, more, uh, to a much longer uh, description of the soil orders, and it takes you to, through the entire system. Um, and it, it drops you down into the, into the keys. Um, not sure what else we want to say about that. It, it's basically you know, this, this keyed out system where you, you uh, simply walk your way down through the taxonomic classes. Along the way, though, uh, much simpler definitions and explanations are given with regard to the various taxa group that you happen to land within. And um, a lot of these uh, within, I think one of the big improvements that we've done with the illustrated guide is it, um, it gives uh, descriptions of soils at the, to the great group level, making it a whole lot easier to comprehend the concept of what the, they are at that particular level. Uh, shown now is, a, is an example of the, of the alpha solves. And this is the general layout. This is, a, again, on one of the earlier editions that we had. Uh, this, was, this was a simplified guide edition. We now have the illustrated guide that is online that you would be downloading and looking at. But this is how it, how it lays out with the description of the alpha solves, the properties and qualities, uh, that, and then as well as um, it gives a location of the alpha solves within the U.S., and the, and the, and the suborders, as well as it's the distribution of alpha solves throughout the world. So again, the target audience for the illustrated guide were basically those people that are new to soil taxonomy. So certainly college students studying soils for the first time, consultants, natural resource managers, agronomists, foresters, engineers, rangeland specialists. And there's a different focus on the Illustrated Guide. You know, the keys to soil taxonomy has a lot of quantitative limits on all the categories through the great group level. Uh, the Illustrated Guide has got these concept statements through the fourth level. And we've used simpler terminology. We've avoided, tried to avoid a lot of the jargon. Uh, you know, it used to be the joke when I started as a soil scientist, you're going to read soil taxonomy, you have to be a lawyer to understand what some of that language is. So hopefully we've tried to untangle some of that complex uh, jargon that was used. And truthfully, it's a more visual teaching style. It's not just a technical guide. Yeah. Yeah, a number of the uh, professors uh, that we've, who worked with this, that has become, now this illustrated guide has become their, their textbook for their courses in soil taxonomy this year. Um, like I said, you know, the illustrated guide, it has you know, a lot of differences, uh, a lot more illustrations. A lot more definitions, a more clear, more uh, simplified terminology used in the definitions of master horizons, subordinates, diagnostic subsurface features, etc. And uh, the, the, one of the big things, the extensive use of hyperlinks. And not only will it take you someplace, but with one click of the button, you, you get to jump right back from where you, where you came from. And so that's kind of a, a nice feature of this. So that way you don't have to lose your place when trying to figure out what, what a word means that perhaps you haven't seen before. So uh, that, that's almost the end of our, uh, our presentation, but I'll just show you real quickly uh, where you find this information. We'll get the screen shared in a second here. Here it comes. So essentially, if you go to the... Uh, well, it used to be called the soils.usda.gov page. It's got a really long URL now. But if you search for soil classification and keys to soil taxonomy, you'll come up with this page. And this is where you get the keys to taxonomy 12th edition, of course. There's an errata sheet included, a recommended citation, summary of changes to the keys, and uh, then you've got previous versions of the keys. And right underneath that is the Illustrated Guide to Soil Taxonomy. And it's a PDF. It's got the recommended citation. Uh, the illustrated guide uh, description that we have online. So it's, it's really posted here for as much accessibility as, as anything. Uh, one of the questions that's already come through, Ken, is is there going to be a hard copy uh, provided of the illustrated guide? We have no plans for providing a hard copy because what we're actually looking at, we've already had suggestions for additional changes and improvements. <laughs> and it's only been out since uh, August. So, the end of the month, really. <laughs> yeah, so what we're actually looking at 
is the fact that this will probably be a very dynamic document that we will continue to make improvements throughout the year. We're, we're thinking about maybe holding them solid by semester. That way a, a professor could have students latch on to one version and they could all work from that very same version. But uh, I would expect that we would be uh, making changes and additions or improvements or whatever as recommended um, uh, on a semester by semester basis. Uh, one other thing about that, if, if you have a, any, uh, if you've used the uh, illustrated guide to soil taxonomy and you have comments or suggestions or you note errors that you think ought to be corrected, uh, get a hold of us uh, either on email, by telephone, uh, leave a, a message on the uh, soil taxonomy forum. Uh, any way you can think of, we'll be monitoring for uh, finding ways of, uh, of uh, improving the uh, illustrated guide. So that pretty much wraps up what Ken and I wanted to share about the Illustrated Guide to Soil Taxonomy. We'd open it up for questions now, and again, you do that through the Q&A tab in your Adobe Connect window.